You're listening to Catalyst Talks, conversations with change agents, outliers, superheroes, and truly conscious leaders modeling what it is to be an unstoppable force for good and truth in this world. What lit these catalysts on fire to do their work and what nuggets of wisdom can they share with a world literally on fire? I'm your host, Stephanie Traeger. I'm a transformational catalyst and life coach to maverick change agents in business, leadership, and life. On this podcast, I wear an eclectic mix of hats, including earthkeeper, wayfinder, truth teller, coach, lawyer, business, and impact strategist. My intention is holding space for higher purpose, peak wellness, soul mastery, and deeper impact so we can live in harmony with ourselves, each other, and nature. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. If you love it, please share and spread the word. We're on YouTube and all the podcast platforms. See the show notes on CatalystTalks.com for links and enjoy this episode. Welcome back to Catalyst Talks Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. My guest, Dr. Gregory D'Amato, will absolutely blow your mind, heart, and soul open. So a little bit about Dr. Greg. He's the creator of the Superhero Deep Transformation Program in Costa Rica, where they work on altering deeply held beliefs while symbiotically balancing the mind, body, spirit, and emotions. His area of expertise includes adjunct therapy with sacred plant medicine, psychedelics, live food, plant-based nutrition, holistic detoxification, human microbiome restoration, heart and brain coherence, and the evolution of the soul and overall mental well-being through activation of our innate inner superhero. Dr. Greg has been facilitating in the expansion of consciousness through activating our inner magic using the unique emergence of intelligent fields of knowledge, such as psychology, neuroscience, quantum physics, and the law of one to create more holistic and fuller picture of true purpose via the evolution of our soul within this holographic reality we call life. So I am really grateful that you are here and I'm serious that this is going to be amazing to hold tight while we have a word from our sponsor, which is me, Catalyst at Intentional paradigms. If you are seeking to come home to who you really are, to do the work you're really here to do, which is part of rebooting the world that we know, then consider having a conversation with me about how we might work together, Uh, whether it's addressing psycho-spiritual growth or healing, or you're a thought leader or ecosystem builder, and you're ready to ripple your impact. Let's have a conversation about some of my programs, including Blaze, the Evolutionary Business and Awakened Leadership Program, or Evolve, which is a beautiful journey around a medicine wheel, and it is all about unleashing higher purpose, peak wellness, soul mastery, and deeper impact in business leadership and life. If this is speaking to you and you're curious about the Evolve Mastery Circle, which is a group program kicking off in September of 2022, then you can also visit stephanietrager.com to apply. This is for eight awakened leaders here to reboot our world. And if you're part of an organization committed to impact, check out how we serve groups to expand their aperture of perception from the inside out, leading to radical innovation and systems change required for systems change, required for seeing things that we don't know yet exist, solutions to problems we don't even know we have. And how we do that is through accessing higher states to reboot our world, leveraging the fullness of who we really are. So definitely reach out to me, stephanietrager.com, or you can check out innerworkofimpact.com for more information. And I want to just thank you for being here. Hang tight as we drop in with Dr. Greg. Dr. Gregory D'Amato, thank you so much for being with me and welcome back. You were my second guest on Catalyst Talks podcast in early 2020, and I had just met you in the jungles of Costa Rica. And my goodness, we have been on a journey collectively and individually since then, a journey of evolution. So with your unique depth and breadth of knowledge around nature and our capacity to heal with your wisdom and gnosis of the interconnectedness of everything unfolding on the world stage and our own journeys of growth, I really wanted to pick up that conversation now and hear about you in this moment we're in. You know, what, what have you been up to? What's front and center for you right now? Um, yeah, share with me and my guests what you are, you know, doing, what you're working on right now. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I'm living in the jungle of Costa Rica. I've been here about 10 years with my family. So we live sort of off the grid. Um, and that to me is one of the most important things right now is, is to me is really investing in our own internal sovereignty and sustainability. How do we, you know, where's our water coming from, right? Where's our food coming from? Where are our seeds coming from, Right. And then looking at where electricity is coming from, what are the electromagnetic signatures and frequencies, 
you know, being admitted from the place in which we're living? You know, how do we block out the dark force energies of a lot of things, right? The 4Gs, the 5Gs, the 2Gs, the 3Gs, all the Gs out there, right? To maintain our, our beautiful internal electromagnetic sovereignty, right? So it's really looking at what we can do as individuals through this massive, you know, great awakening that we've been, you know, demanded seats to be here, right? Is what people forget. It's like we've demanded to be here for this show. You know, if we zoom out a bit, we can look at we're at the end of the third, you know, cycle in the 3D world. There's 25,900 year cycles. We're at the end of a master cycle right now, right? So this is the huge great awakening. The master cycle is around 75,000 years, right? So at the end of this cycle, which every single, you know, uh, you know, group and culture has been speaking about the, the Mayans, you know, all the Native Americans, they've, they've spoke about this time for thousands of years, right? So this is what we call the Great Awakening, right? This is the emergence into 4D from 3D, right? So for me, it's how can we start to assist humanity into, you know, that entrance into 4D? What is 4D? What is 3D? What is 2D? You know, all these fun kinds of things. So I've been deeply researching the law of one. This is probably my, my main source of information, which is so beautiful. Um, if anyone's interested in, in going so deep in some of the most magical information ever, um, it's the Law of One, which is channeled by Ra, a contact that came here you know, thousands of years ago. We've heard of Ra, the sun god, and things like that. So to me, it's really looking at how can we transition you know, individually and then collectively into the fourth density, which this planet has gone into in around 1945. Fourth density is mainly heart shock. Right. So it's mainly the frequency of love and understanding. Right. So the human's resonance on the planet, which is the vibration of the planet for thousands of years has been about 7.83 hertz. This is alpha. This is just full presence. OK, cool. Everything's good. And what started happening around 1945 is the resonance started to increase. Right. And this is mainly controlled by the sun, the photons of the sun, the gamma ray activation. And we started bringing up more aliveness into the heart region. Right. So we've been in the full gamma. Right. Like yesterday, we were 49 hertz in Schumann's residence, which is just ridiculous. 69 the day before. So every day we're in about 20 to 100 hertz, which is full gamma. Gamma opens up the heart shock. Right. So it's fourth density, which is primary love and understanding. So what's happening on the planet right now is a lot of people are going through this dark night of the soul. Right. Because anything that's closed your heart chakra, any trauma slash catalyst. Right. Is, is allowing us to go back to those, those things, those places, those dark places, those shadows, which are designed as part of our Akashic records to really evolve us through potential catalyst, right? If we choose to see it that way. If we don't, if we blame the experience, which is the beautiful lesson in itself, through lack of contemplation, right? Ah, this person did that, or this, or this happened. I can't believe they did that. Then what happens is we have the chemical byproducts of those experiences we call emotions, right? So those emotions are all 3D emotions, right? They're allowed to be in 3D. 4D, they're not really allowed, right? Because they're, they're, they're stopping us from evolving into a true state of consummate love of self and love of other self, which is everyone outside of ourself, right? Everyone is our other self, right? So this is the, the mirroring of interdependent evolution. And we go through these different distortions. There's three primary distortions which we're here, you know, to evolve through. And the primary distortion is to know thyself, right? And we do that through interdependent evolution of other self. Like how, how does the mechanic make us feel when he makes us wait an extra day? That's teasing out our frustration, right? That's teasing out our anger, all these different things. So all of these things that we've been going through are through these three mainly uh, three main distortions, right? To know thyself, and then we go into accept thyself, and then we go merge with creator as creator. Most people in 3D get stuck in that first one, right? They blame the mirror for showing them that which is just reflected internally, right? And if we start to understand that the projector at the movie theater is right here, this is the matrix of the mind. If we're cursing the movie in which we're watching externally, we go back to the creator, Right. And this is all quantum physics as well. So if we don't enjoy the movie we're watching, we say, well, who, who are the actors playing all these roles in our evolution? Right. All of these guys are just in there helping us to know ourselves better. Right. So if we haven't been knowing ourselves, we've been cursing the external, cursing the movie, cursing the experience. What happens is we're in this dark night of the soul because 4D requires us to first understand ourselves then accept ourselves and then love ourselves. And if we can't do that internally, we can never do that for other self, every relationship, right? So what I'm seeing in a lot of the clients I'm working with is it's just squeezing, right?
right, of self, of these fears are coming out because they've been suppressed for so long. They're going back to childhood traumas, childhood fears. I can't do this. I can't do this because they've never dealt with the state of deep self-love through self-acceptance. Acceptance is the frequency of freedom, right? What we accept, we're free of. What we don't, we're slaves to, right? So we go back to what creates acceptance, understanding. What creates understanding, contemplation, right? And most people in Western society are not contemplating, right? Or haven't been. We've been purposely distracted in the matrix of the world. 4D requires us to go back into ourselves, to, to go back into silence, to connect deep with nature and simply feel. Right. 3D was all about thinking. I think I could do this. I could do this. I could run multiple things. Okay. Well, how does it make you feel? I don't know. I don't care. Right. It doesn't matter. 4D requires us now to open up the heart. And the 4D requires us to filter the mind with the heart. 3D requires us to filter the heart with the mind. Right. So when we look at the heart, heart is a divine feminine energy, right? It's 528 hertz. This is also our DNA. Right? This is how we're being upgraded right now through light and sound is essentially through this, this DNA, this Fibonacci spiral that's being altered through the, the rays of the sun right? and the light that creates wholeness. The masculine energy is light, knowledge, wisdom, photons. The feminine energy is a design, the divine receiver, which is love. Right? And mm -hmm. the purpose of love is to inform intelligence. Right? Mm. So Quick question all of this for you. is happening very fast. Wait, wait, wait. I'm jumping in here because you're, you know, you just downloaded a major transmission and everyone who has just received it received what they needed to receive, although their linear left brain 3D mind might not have understood. <laughs> so mm. pause for a second and just feed that need in folks. So let me uh, ask you, you're talking about frequency. I think a lot of people listening might not know what you're, what you mean when you're saying, five, you know, the, the resonance, the hertz of the heartbeat, the hertz or, you know, what is the frequency, you know, you're speaking about and like our natural state of frequency, the distorted frequencies we're experiencing, um, you know, the internal electromagnetic frequency. What, what is this for folks who don't know? And so, why is it important? Why is it important to know this and work with it right now? Yeah. I mean, this is the, this is the hallmark of what it is, you know, to be in this vibrational reality is understanding that everything has an energy of frequency vibration. You know, one of Tesla's favorite quotes that I love is if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So every single thing that you see in this holographic plane, this lucid dreaming state that we're in, the illusion within illusions has a resonant frequency and can be measured, whether it's, you know, a quartz crystal, whether it's your table, whether it's your friend, whether it's your dog, whether it's a type of cancer, whether it's joy, whether it's love, whether it's shame, whether it's gratitude, they all exist vibrating in an oscillation of a certain resonant frequency, which is measured in hertz or kilohertz or megahertz or gigahertz, depending on how far we want to go, right? So the frequency is really important because it's understanding that everything that you're surrounding yourself has an energetic vibration, right? The people, the coworkers, you know, your house, we live in a circular house because it's a DNA spiral of Fibonacci frequency, which is 528 hertz, which is the frequency of love, right? So all of these things are really important, but only when we realize that they are, right? So the hertz is cycle per second. So it's basically bringing, saying how much light is coming in. If we have something at one hertz, it's one cycle per second. It's one bit of information, one photon. Right. So the more we can increase our vibration, the higher the resonant frequency, the more information and knowledge and wisdom that we can basically take in. Right. So the average person is about 2000 hertz, meaning they can take in about 2000 bits of information per second. Coming into the brain is 400 billion bits of information per second. So everyone is pretty much filtering down this level of reality. And these 2000 bits are less than one half of one millionth of 1% of what's actually coming into the brain. Everyone has their distortional perceptions that allow that frequencies to come through. And these frequencies are the lessons and the teachings that they're needing based on that specific level. Everything else is gated out. You can gate out joy, you can gate out gratitude, or you can gate it in, right? And there's a lot of different ways to do that. And would you like to talk about how? <laughs> One of the things that I know that you have your heart and soul and hands deeply entrenched in is working with plant medicine, working with herbs, really, you know, creating opportunities for people to 
to align their internal frequency with the state of health, a state of perfect health and vibrant, you know, vitality. So tell us a little bit about how you do that and what's alive for you in that space right now. Especially yeah, so, given the especially given the state of the world right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess we could talk quick about the state of the world. You know, the state of the world is essentially in a state of three dimensional disconnect, right? Because they've never found their truth, right? Their heart, their passion, their love. You know, this is obviously generally speaking. There's a lot that have, right? And we do that through the seeking. We seek the light, right? The light is the divine knowledge um, and wisdom of the masculine energy, the photons. When we seek the light, we activate our love center, right? We could do that in a lot of different ways. Plant medicine does it as well because the plants are second density, right? They've found their love. They found their bliss. They found their deep connection to the soil, right? Our internal soil of evolution creates our serotonin. Right. So the human microbiome, I do a lot of, of work with. I think that's the, the starting point for a lot of people because that's been so destroyed. Right. If we look at serotonin, for instance, it's 3.78 billion years old. Every single thing outside in nature has evolved via serotonin. Right. Everything is serotonergic. Right. That creates evolution. Now, the microbiome, which I call the earth, right, the soil is an exact mirror of the microbiome in humans, right? It has all the neurotransmitters. It's got serotonin, it's got gamma amino butric acid, it's got melatonin, it's got all these things that are deep in the soil, right? And if we take away that, we get confused. We don't really know how to evolve. Our consciousness gets suppressed. When we talk about how that's been done, it's been done mainly with a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz, right? That's a frequency of the Shinimate pathway. This is a pathway of which our probiotics are vibrating at, right? This exact frequency. And if you can match that frequency, you can destroy the human microbiome, thereby eliminating 95% of your serotonin. So we get very confused when we don't have serotonin. That's the grounding to being on this planet, right? And if you look at ways like, like psilocybin and things like that, John Hopkins research has been finding out that this is a deep connector of source. It's a serotonergic neuronostic is what they call it, right? So via serotonin, it floods the body, opens up the pathways of the brain. So we get a neurogenesis. We're actually growing new neurons to specifically gate in the gnosis, which is the magic and the mysticism and the wisdom of the planet, the inner magic. And if we know how to gate in inner magic, the other bullshit of the world gets gated out, right? <laughs> we learn how to navigate and choose through free will choice. How do we surround ourselves with plants and nature and waterfalls and sunshine and coconuts and plant medicine and you name it. It's just a choice, right? It really is. So when we start to make these choices, what happens is the human microbiome starts to come alive. You know, probiotics, the most important ever right now on the planet, because our, your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi and, you know, your 3G, your 4G, all of these are oscillating on that very dangerous frequency of 2.45 gigahertz, right? So we have to start buffering out the external dark energy to maintain our DNA, which is love, maintain our human microbiome. So probiotics, super important. Um, use a company called Dr. O'Hara's um, that you're familiar with, right? That mm -hmm. have been fermented for five years in big oak barrels, playing Mozart every day, won every award for everything. So we can start to feel grounded. You know, the anxiety and the fears on a physical level are all serotonergically, you know, suppressed essentially. They're all based on, on serotonin, right? And if we're, if we're eating wheat and dairy and all these foods that are highly subsidized, then we're not going to be able to evolve. We're going to be stuck in a state of fear, right? So to me, a lot of the work I do in the superhero program is really looking at how do we create the inner superhero that starts to create the external matrix internally, right? Which you talk about the third distortion, merging with creator as creator. First, accepting that power, knowing ourselves through that power. Because if we're not creating, we're simply in a state of distraction right? We're just happy to listen to music, run around, go to work. We're not really in that state of creating because we've never understood our deeper power because we've not connected back through the gut, the microbiome back into the soil and the earth that brings us to that resonance that we talked about as full gamma, right? Back into the heart, back into what you're really here to do, activating those passions, right? So psilocybin is a great way to do it. It's a serotonergic neuronostic. So what that does is it rewires the brain and gates in 
right? The beauty and the magic and the love and the bliss, which is 99.9% of this reality, right? It is the beauty. It is the magic. It is the bliss. It is the waterfalls. It's, I mean, everything is magic. If you watch what water does, it's absolutely magic, right? Just watch water. Watch what leaves do. Everything comes from a Fibonacci spiral of 528 hertz seeking light, you know, just becoming absolutely magic. We can choose what we want to be involved in, right? Each of it has lessons. We can involve in the drama, right? We seek drama, drama seeks us. We seek love, love seeks us. We seek light, light seeks us. Whatever we're seeking is a magnetic pole that will eventually seek us. We become that creator, right? Every second of every day, we're actually creating right? We're part of symbiogenesis, meaning at one 100th millionth of a second, we're actually interacting with the quantum field with our thoughts as creator. Oh my gosh, I thought about this person. There they are. It's like, how? Like, oh, I thought about my mom. She's calling me right now. But that doesn't make any sense, right? It's a holographic dream reality. It's like lucid dreaming state, right? When you look at the holographic universe and how it's all working, all of it's designed to teach us that you just created that. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You created that and that and that and that. Oh, no, I didn't. I don't accept that. Okay, go back to stage one, right? Distortion one, know thyself, right? Once we know thyself, we accept that we did create it. We then merge into that power as creator. And we're always manifesting, creating simply by creating electromagnetic signature with the mind, the light, mm. and you know the love of the heart that creates an electromagnetic frequency because the heart has 5,000 times more magnetism than the brain. Right? So activating the heart right now on the planet is happening. Anything that's outside of that heart, if it's fear of rejection, fear of loss, fear of mistrust, being mistrusted, all of these things, what happens is the, the mind is saying, oh, you got to use it. You got to deal with it. You gotta, no, no, I don't. And we run from it. Right? We blame the experience. We blame dad. We blame mom. But that's a challenge for evolution. Who are you when that external movie is playing? How do you feel? right? When the horror film is on, when the love story is on, the drama movies on, it's all of your creation, all of it. It's designed to see if you change. Mm. The point is to be balanced and coherent while driving a, you know, a ship on the ocean in the biggest storm and lightning. Can you smile and laugh at the rain, right? That's the inner creation of this is amazing. What a great challenge. Or you're in a state of fear until you've mastered that fear of loss fear of the illusion of loss, fear of separation, fear of rejection, fear of a breakup, because we're creating it all. All mm -hmm. of it is in the matrix of the mind, which is the unconscious mind, which is what the veil has cut through to create more polarity on this planet. They've given us an amnesic state, right? Let's see what happens now, they say. Let's see what happens when they forget all previous incarnations, all people, everything they've ever known. Let's go, see what they feel, right? Ooh. And it creates this interesting dynamic of, you know, the, the one yeah. question the universe constantly asks is, I wonder what they'll choose when they think it's all real, right? And whatever we choose, as we think it's real, the universe simply responds, you're right, right? This person is bad. Humanity's horrible. Look how bad this oil is. Look at this over here. Or look at how amazing my vanilla is. <sighs> there's, there's 50 beans on this one vine. <gasps> People say, well, you can't grow vanilla there. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's right here. That doesn't make any sense, right? Because we're always in the art of creation or we're in distraction. We're distracted mm -hmm. from our true evolution, our fears, our anger, our sadness, our frustrations, everything that's going to keep coming out in the experience as a holograph for you to learn from that experience, right? Because this is the movie film playing. And if you don't like okay. what's being projected on the screen, you got to look in here and say, well, what am I actually creating? You can't throw your popcorn at the screen. You can't blame the movie that's playing when you're the actual true creator. It doesn't matter if we know that or not or believe it. It's happening, right? We mm. go back to 1852 and the Heisenberger Observer Effect, where he said, I wonder what slit these, these photons will go through. I think it'll go through one. Hmm, went through one. He's like, that's a bit odd. I wonder if it'll go through none. <laughs> it went through none. Why? Because the photons are literally waiting for his expectancy of what, is, what he wants to do. They don't know where to go. He says, oh, I think it'll go through none. They went through none. I think it'll go through three. Went through three. He's like, what the hell's going on? It's called the Heisenberger Observer Effect. The observer is always the creator, right? You mm. can't separate the two. In the dream, if you think something, it happens. It's a bit quicker in dreams. This is a semi-lucid dreaming state. So when we start mm. to merge with creator as creator, we stop cursing the movie. 
And we start to mm -hmm. go back in the back room and say, let me go see what the hell, what am I contributing to? What are my thoughts every day about what I really want society to be like? What is my image for the world? The best world possible. Because the old 3D world is slowly disintegrating. The 3D world is primarily based on the dark forces of fear, control, and separation, right? Those are all ego paradigms. You can't be feared and controlled and separate from heart and love. It doesn't exist. It just exists on its own. You can't be love with fear. You can't be, you know, control with love. It's like, no, there's fear, control, and there's love and acceptance, right? Those are the two sort of paradigms that are working in every single thought and every decision we make. Just depends on where it is along those lines. Love, acceptance, fear, control. Fear is always out of control. And control is always out of fear, right? And love is always out of acceptance. Can we get to that polarity of true acceptance and true consummate love? This is what we're here to do, to figure out. While the actors come in and try to throw us off and say, well, here, what do you think about this? <gasps> oh, I'm frustrated. This as well. That didn't create that. You have frustration. The mirror just came out, right? Mm, yes. And dropping that into the world, like, like the, the tangible things we're experiencing right now, first of all, you, you really, the way that you live, you demonstrate, you, you walk the talk so much because you're living, you're creating your own reality. You're creating your own system over here. You're not, you're not like fighting the dark forces. You're creating the light. You're creating truth and reality as you see it and know it and learn from nature and reality every day. And so, you know, for, for folks who are in the 3d world, working to change systems within the system, you know, I, I would like, I want to hear you speak to that. And first I want to also kind of bring it back to, cause I know it's part of this, how we perceive what is actually real you know this that's what it's about and so right now there's this like collective perception of reality that is driving the story of reality that is proliferating that story everywhere and so when you know when you take it back to the individual granular meat like I said this in my last uh, interview like I am right now experiencing I had a leak in my house my boiler and like oh my god I had to rip up the floors and and, and we just renovated this last year. And so I had to go through this whole thing and say, whoa, where am I leaking energy? Whoa, where, what, what's going on internally for me? And really see the holographic nature of this experience in my little granular experience right now. Mm -hmm. And when you can make those connections, it does, it's, it's not, doesn't, you know, it makes it easier to navigate. Like you said, it's like, how do we, because you're like, whoa, this is cool. And so how do we take that to the collective stage right now from pandemics, to war and to all these things that for everybody, it's very, it's very real, you know? And so like, how do, how do you shift that perception to navigating the collective reality right now? Yeah, I mean, the, what we're having is this collective dark night of the soul, right? Because the, the version of reality wasn't really real. You know, we were fed all of these things and education systems and on and on and on and on and on. It goes, none of it was really real. None of it was really sustainable, right? So how can we sustain First, that love, right? And that passion. If we go to work every day, we're, we're passionate, we're loving it, amazing. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to. But if you're doing it for fear and control of not having enough money or food or all of these kinds of things, we're a slave to our own creation because we participated in that system. So that's a simple check. Are you, are you feeling like, oh my God, this is the best ever? If not, what needs to change in order to create a new system? That's all it is. It's getting into the heart because 4D is simply about love and understanding, right? And the, the universe just asks, well, how can you create a system where everybody wins, right? Where the water wins, where the microorganisms wins, where every tree wins, where every person wins. These old mm -hmm. like Amazon ways of doing things where, okay, you get a little bit of convenience, but I just rake it in and we screw every other person. That's not sustainable, right? It isn't in any way, shape or form because someone has to lose, right? And a lot of people have to lose and there's karmic repercussions to all these things that are happening. So the karmic suffering that we're seeing on the planet is because we've never asked that question, right? To anything we've done, how does everybody win? You know, I'll give you a quick example of, you know, I love water, right? I absolutely love it. I've studied water. It's one of my you know, favorite things ever, right? So we, we developed this subterranean oval shaped water tank because I look, how does water like to be treated? It likes to be below the ground, likes to be four degrees Celsius, the absolute point of water, right? 
and it loves to be shown in, in an oval, which when you tilt it is a Fibonacci spiral of love, which concentrates light, right? So we did that and the water's so happy and so amazing and you have a, so much water, it's just ridiculous. But instead we say, well, I don't care about water. I just want that in my house. Well, how does it like to be treated? I don't care. Well, mm. uh, but does it like to be cool? What's the temperature? What's the container? Does it like to be underground? I don't care. I want the water, mm. right? And the water is just an example. So the water starts to die. We say, oh, well, guess what? I'll just put chlorine in so we can get rid of the rotting bodies of the water. No one will ever know. Let's put fluoride in there. Let's put more things in there, right? Because these dead bodies of water aren't happy. The spirit has left. So we hide these rotting dead bodies with chlorine and all these other things. But why don't we actually ever ask, how does water like to be treated? Every ancient culture used water as a deity, right? It was a god. Spring water was perfect. This is what we look for. Where is the beautiful water? Right, which every society has done. Right. Mm. So when we start asking, well, how does everybody win? How does the water win? Right. How do these guys win? How does this person win? How does everything win? You know, how does cannabis like to be treated? How does psilocybin like to be taken in? How does this plant medicine like to be stroked and touched? What does it really require? Does it need more silica elements? Get into uh, bio, uh, biodynamics and Rudolf Steiner's, all of his elements as well. So we're really looking at how many pieces can we bring into the puzzle that aren't being fed in by the matrix, right? We're not learning about these, these holographic nature of reality, right? Mm -hmm. So people are going through this dark night of the soul because the insustainable 3D world has not been feeding people's souls, right? It hasn't. Mm -hmm. It's fear, control, and separation. We can only do that for so long, right? We're the scared rat running around being happy with this one piece of cheese. That's 3D. It's like, ah, oh, I got the cheese. What about yeah. tomorrow? Oh, hopefully I can find some more cheese. Oh. Okay, well, maybe you can make your own cheese. <gasps> what? How does that work? Right? Well, here's mm -hmm. how you have to do it. How can you be abundantly sustainable with fruit trees and water and electricity and land and community and love? You can do it. It's just a choice, right? But you don't stop the seeking of that choice. That choice has to resonate from the heart. So mm -hmm. this 3D world of dark night of the souls, because we've never thought about this inequality everywhere. Like, why? Why can't we get water, you know, over in Africa? It's easy. Tesla created it. They use it now for harp systems and things like that. He created a, lect a lightning, and he noticed that lightning created rain. Cool, we could do that, right? So there's all these things in technologies that, you know, for the first time, we're sort of like, huh, why aren't we doing this, right? And there's so many souls on this planet. There's about 65 million souls that are from 4D and beyond that have been planted here for this exact purpose. They're the ones that feel they don't fit in. They reject war, they reject violence, they reject plastic. All these things are like, what, what are you guys doing, right? Because they're not really from this planet. They've learned from another density to come back down to say, hey guys, I, I don't know what's going on, but like, let's do a better way, right? Let's trick a better world. And if not, we suffer. We suffer individually. Our spouse will suffer. Our kids will suffer if we don't. And this is what karma is. It's a suffering where we're not listening to the deep whispers of the universe, that requires mm. love and light and deep balance and connection, right? When we listen to that heart, and most people are afraid of that, right? It's like, no, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. When the haves are mitigated and the wants are accelerated, you've started to master your life, right? When you've eliminated most of your bills and you live for free, you've mastered it. Or we choose that life to learn the lessons of tyranny, internal slavery, right? Or we have internal abundance that creates external abundance, right? So it's going back to that creator as creator. So what people can do is really start connecting back to nature, right? How can you connect to nature? You know, there's more evolved fun things as sun gazing. You know, I got into sun gazing years ago where you're staring at the sun within an hour of sunrise or sunset, starting 10 seconds a day, going into 10 more, 10 more, 10 more every day, getting up to basically 44 minutes, right? So you're bringing in so much light into the body, your pineal gland actually triples in size, right? And this is the center for all light and truth and knowledge and wisdom and understanding. You know, doing a fast is another great way to start balancing things. You can do, you know, here we do coconut water fast, which matches the blood. We can do a juice fast. You can do a day of water fasting, really just getting into not doing anything right? When we're in silence, we open up the crown chakra. We can actually get all the downloads and the knowledge and the wisdom that we require, but it's only in silence, right? We're so socialized into constantly needing music and something, something in the background that we can never actually hear source, right? So sitting in silence in nature and just seeing what comes, just being, ah, 
I don't like my job. Ooh, where'd that come from? Oh, that's interesting. I really <laughs> want to be an artist. Great. Why don't you do that? Like, really? Like, you're not doing anyone benefit having this low vibration, right? Because when we're looking at this acceleration to 4D, the most important thing that we can do is hold our highest vibration possible, right? That's it. That's it. You can sit and meditate all day if you're in joy. Amazing. You can sit and climb a mountain if you need that. You can go to the beach if you're at your job, rocking it out. Amazing. If you're holding your highest vibration that you believe in resonance with the planet, you're now acting like a mini pyramid. This is what they did, put the pyramids down, you know, about 13,000 years ago, was to create a harmonic resonance of evolution, right? So if we can create that, we're one of one of, one of eight billion right, frequencies on this planet. If we start to harmonize, the whole mm -hmm. world begins to harmonize, right? We're all mini pyramids. And we know within 30 meters of us, if we go into heart coherence, just sitting and being gratitude, you know, for all the things that we have, everybody else around us goes into heart coherence. But to get to heart coherence, we have to go to brain coherence, right? We have to shut off the, the ego and the mind and the needs and the wants and the things to really just connect it. This is 3D, gone, right? It's obsolete, it's like the dinosaurs. We're now into 4D, which is love and understanding. Anything that we don't understand, we have an obligation to deeply seek through contemplation. What do we want to understand? And this is the biggest thing I see in couples. It's like, well, he does this and he does this. And blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, why? I don't know. I don't care. I just don't want it anymore. Well, if you haven't contemplated why he is doing that, because that's his coping strategy that worked at age four or whatever it is, then the feminine won't understand the masculine. The masculine won't understand the feminine. What we have is the battle of the right hand battling the left. Together, they complement each other and create wholeness, right? And that battle is going on for years and years and years. It's a battle in the mind, right? If we truly want to understand the feminine, we have to understand the masculine. The feminine needs to understand the feminine to truly understand the masculine. And it comes through the lens of compassion, of wanting to understand, seeking that understanding, as opposed to, I'm so busy at work, I can't even deal with your shit. Leave me alone. It's like, huh, well, you haven't found silence yet. You haven't found contemplation. What are you doing so much that you can't actually listen to your own internal heart, your passions and your love? Once you do that, the peace in which you require external to yourself is only earned when you're learning about peace, right? We can only master you know, impatience by mastering patience. We can only master mm -hmm. patience by mastering impatience, the duality of polarity. So it's really getting into that deeper connection with self, right? Which most people, it's such a foreign concept right? That self-nurturing and that silence. We're always doing, doing, doing. Mm -hmm. We're not being, being, being. The more we can be, the less we can do, the more we can become, right? And with society, that's not loud, right? It's not praise. It's not revered. It's like, oh, I got six other apartments and this and that. Oh, amazing. I got six cars. I can drive one. It's like, oh, but I have cancer all parts of my body. I'm on my fourth divorce. My kids don't talk to me, but I'm successful. And I'm like, I think so. Maybe, right? Maybe mm -hmm. you're, you're learning success of all of the hardships, right? Which is optional. All of it has to go through all of these experiences because the only true form of learning is experiential learning. You can't tell anyone how to ride, drive a forklift. Okay, here's how you drive the forklift. All right, get in and do it. They're like, jur, jur. oh man, this is crazy. Like you can't teach anyone anything. You can remind them of what they've already learned or you can open up their heart to seeking that which they're truly seeking. Right. Mm. So this big dark night of the soul is saying we've sort of went down this bumpy road of dependence on so many things that we've lost our independence, our independence of love and knowledge and wisdom, and more importantly, connection. We've outsourced our consciousness to those that would never deserve that. Right. And when we start to take back our consciousness through free will, thought, thinking, passion, and love. What happens is the world starts to change simply by us just holding that frequency. That's it. There's nothing to do. There's no teaching. You hold your highest light vibration by being the highest version of you and you win. You win physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. You've mastered creation by accepting the challenge of the external illusion to be able to alter the internal. You say, no, the creator creates the internal illusion, enjoying the movie in which he's created. Questions on that? <laughs> It's way easier to, it's way easier to connect this dot 
once you do it with your, with your own, with yourself, like, okay, my house, my space, my relationship, me doing the inner work, doing, you know, opening my heart, connecting, dropping in, becoming love, raising my frequency, cleaning myself up. What am I attracting? And now looking at the, I mean, and I kind of, you know, it's about a longer term game where, you know, society needs to clean up their gunk so that we can collectively feel this and experience this next evolution, 4D, 5D. But what I'm curious about are folks who are listening and thinking, yeah, and what about acute situations? War, okay? What do you do? Like, what is happening? What is hap- we know what's happening there. Like, you just explained it, right? Well, what, what to do in a situation where war, I mean, it, it's, it's obviously it's understanding the historical the connotations and context that are, that have created that situation. Um, but what, what to do in that? And there's also like in an acute illness, I would say like war is the same thing as a body in acute illness, in acute illness, right? It's like, ah, what because do you the do? body's been at war for a while, you know? So that internal struggle that we have where I don't want to do this, but I have to, that only works acutely right? Anything that has this negative taste in our mouth from previous experience has to be basically understood through contemplation, right? Then we can get to acceptance. Then we distill to love and light wholeness, right? So if we don't, we have this internal battle and struggle that, you know, I I used to work a lot with cancer patients, right? That was one of my first people probably 15 years ago because I've researched it so much, worked with my dad and other types of people. And that was to me the ultimate battle, Right. And what you'd have to say to people is, okay, you have to figure out how not to be you. Right. Or at least that version of you that created this. Right. You can't just juice and still hold on to anger and sadness and depression and cursing the world. You're having acid forming emotions. Right. You can't then go back after you juice and eat your shitty food diet because you're addicted to the suffering of the products in which we're encoded with that frequency. A lot of the animal industry, they're specifically tortured in a way that that frequency then affects us. It's stored in the infinite memory of the water, which is in the blood, right? All of these things are subsidized for fear, control, and separation. So all of these illnesses and these things that we have internally, if we don't deal with them, it's a frequency that then goes to our children epigenetically and electromagnetically. They have to deal with it. Then if they don't deal with it, their kids deal with it. Their kids. The problem is we haven't really looked at it from a societal standpoint of how can we truly get to the deepest healing of trauma, right? If we look into the mm. DNA, we have 14 generations of trauma that's held in our DNA. Our DNA has an infinite memory. It's the Fibonacci spiral of love, the divine feminine energy. So if we go back into research of past lifetimes, all of it's there. We repeat, repeat, repeat. We come back in exactly where we left off, same people. You know, we have a primary Mm -hmm. cluster of incarnation, 12 to 15 souls. That's mainly our partner, partners. And that's going to be, you know, a lot of times our kids um, and our brothers and sisters, right? But our kids have their own primary cluster of incarnation, you know, which is their partner, our partners. And then we have secondary clusters, tertiary clusters. So all of these things that we think are, are new are very ancient. And the universe says, I'll give them another chance to figure it out. Let's see what they do. Ooh, and it washes. Let's see what happens. Ooh. And we have free will, <laughs> right? We have free will. Our free will is a distortion of the reality based on our own individual perceptions. Right. You can get 100 people in a room and you can introduce something that would consider stressful. Right. Could be a white bunny rabbit. Right. You can get and rate people like, what's your stress level? Oh, my God. 100 would say one. Everyone else is like, oh, my God, zero, 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 six, 14. Oh, I had a bunny that bit me when I was a kid. I'm afraid of white bunnies. Oh, OK. Everyone can see the same exact stimulus from a million different standpoints, right? We have seven levels of the soul. There's seven sub levels to each level. There's seven sub sub levels to every sub level. It just keeps going on and on and on infinitely forwards and backwards, right? So everyone is here on a very specific mission to first know themselves, right? We can't merge with creator for creating out of fear or anger or anxiety. This is what, you know, has been programmed into movies and TV and education systems for years. People are finally waking up because their heart is opening from the the 4D frequencies coming from the sun. Our DNA, which is the the frequency, the holder of light and sound, right? They have 5G, we have the sun, right? We have nature. So whatever is louder is going to be picked up into our body and it's going to start programming us epigenetically, right? So what is happening is the old 3D world is basically falling apart. 
right? So if we don't reject that old 3D world of fear, control, and separation, if we internalize fear, control, and separation, that battle is here. And the more people who don't deal with that battle creates more war externally. It's a holographic matrix. No one's going to go to war unless they're in a state of fear, control, or anger, or separation. They're not going to be like, yeah, I want to love people so much and start a community. And I want to shoot them in the head too. Like, oh, I, I don't understand. Like, what? What? My, so even if you look at what's happening in Ukraine, these guys are just taking off their uniforms and leaving them. They said, we don't want to die. We don't want to kill people. You already see 4D everywhere. Nobody wants it. Yet the leaders are told, do exactly what we say, right? Through fear, right? Through mm -hmm. control, through separation of borders and illusions and all these things. So we're reaching the peak of the dark and the light. And the mm -hmm. battle has been going on for eons. And this planet is about half a million years old from these groups that have been here. So that's a whole nother fun conversation, but we <laughs> feel it internally. And we have that choice every second of every day of what do we want to feed? Mm -hmm. Do we want to feed the light? Do we want to feed the love? Right. And one of the coolest things I've ever heard, right, is if you take a piece of your DNA and you put it in a room that's hermetically sealed with nothing else around, nothing will happen. If you then bring light into the room as photons, what will happen is that DNA will go, it will suck light into wholeness. So wholeness is a symbiotic balance of love and light. Divine feminine energy, the Fibonacci spiral inside of our body is the love energy, right? Love is always seeking light and light is always seeking love until you start to create darkness in between. Then it mm. gets confused and it forgets. The DNA gets damaged. You have 3G, 4G, 5G, all the Gs. The DNA starts picking up these dark frequencies, which are anxieties and fear frequencies, which are, you know, all kinds of other things. So the more we can choose, like, I don't want that. You know, I use devices that put me in, in a scalar frequency of nature every second of every day, regardless of where I am, 5G cannot affect me. None of these things can. So it's seeking solutions to these things until you feel amazing every second of every day. You don't <laughs> stop seeking until you actually find what you're seeking. Most people forget to seek or they don't seek until completion because they feel they don't deserve it or they can't find it or they don't have the intelligence or on and on and on, the money, the resources, all of it, they stop seeking. Resources has nothing to do with it, right? It's the electromagnetic frequency you hold in your heart and in your mind for that consistent seeking in your dreams, in your thoughts, in your day, holding on to it, closing your eyes and spending five minutes envisioning the new earth. Not only what do you think, what do you see, but what do you feel? It's already mm -hmm. here. What is it, right? This is holographic image creation, electromagnetic seed um, sowing. What are we planting? because this is the Heisenberger observer effect. If we think the world is shit, these guys love it. They love chaos, right? They can create new mm. systems out of chaos because we're so afraid we'll take anything. Or we say, you know what? I got plenty of water. I got plenty of food. I got unbelievable amounts of seeds. I got everything I need and more incomplete and utter abundance. I'm not affected at all by the external world. That takes years of seed sowing, right? It's not just overnight. What we're doing here is starting to, you know, implant those seeds of, huh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll buy an aloe plant tomorrow and hmm, play with it in the house, right? But now that plant requires more plants and I'll get another one and another one, another one. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, this apartment is just, I'm going to sell it and get a piece of land and start planting and put seeds under my tongue and encode them for nine minutes and then give them love for 30 seconds and plant them. That broccoli, kale, cauliflower, whatever you've planted now grows specifically for every single thing you need. Every mineral, amino acid, fatty acid, everything you need is growing from nature because mm. it's requiring that symbiogenic balance. We've just never asked it to do so. And the ancient Vedic tools have been lost through mm. new education, right? A doctor comes from teacher, right? So we're looking at the new teachers back from nature and connection to source because the 4D demands it. It's not accepting the 3D version of reality anymore. No one wants to participate anymore. Everyone is seeking the nature the beauty, the jungles, the love, the passions, the community. Unity is also the frequency of 528 hertz. Unity versus separation. You know, you got light over here. You know, unity. You got separation, darkness. You got control, darkness. You got sovereignty over here, right? And freedom. So all of it is basically a free will choice. You know. Mm, yeah, and so, oop, and so with that, uh, the the 
The way you speak, I know that you're an herbalist and you work with plants on so many dimensions and, you know, you create beautiful um, opportunities for people to experience the, the, the medicine. Um, and it would, given the world and everyone's reliance coming from this fear-based reliance and need on this solution to the virus that has proliferated worldwide. And, and that so much of what you speak to speaks to why, you know, the, the container, the, 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 the way you speak about loving water and loving earth, we've, we've forgotten that. And so of course, it's just, what if it is just the forgetting that has caused the proliferation of viruses that, that are about the forgetting and all we need to do is remember. And so you create tools to help us remember. And so tell us about that. Like how, how what have you seen? Like some of the big kind of um, obvious I would say the word canker sore comes up right now. Like, you know, <laughs> you just can't ignore that um, coming up right now. And what is, what are some of the solutions that you're, you're working on creating? Yeah. I mean, there's so many, there's, there's mental solutions, there's physical solutions, there's deep spiritual and there's emotional solutions. All of them basically come back to that energetic <laughs> plane kind of thing, you know? So from the plant medicine, yeah, the plant medicine, there's more people in the world taking plant medicine than ever before. They're deeply seeking another solution, right? I'm talking so about everyone, like, even, I'm not only talking about like, um, I'm not, I'm talking about all types of plant medicine, right? Just herbs and, and healing mode. Um, all of it, exactly. yeah. yeah, everything is medicinal, right? Which is kind of fun. I take people on herb walks here and I'm like, and that's this, and this is this, and this is this, and this, and this, and they're like, I thought it was a weed. I'm like, they're all weeds. They can't stand to say that, right? They're just like, <laughs> I'm a weed and you're just a human. You're like, yeah, sort of, right? So we've forgotten the discernment of nature, right? Mm. Everything is a weed or it's poisonous. Why? Who said that? Where does that seed come into? Mm. I mean, you have 0.01% of anything is poisonous, but you're not supposed to even eat it. It's meant to be put on the skin. It's a poison for bot flies and all these other things. It's like, you wouldn't take a knife and be like, oh, look at this. Oh, look, it's stabbing me right now. It's like, yeah, don't ever use a knife. No, look, cut your veggies with it. <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh, stupid of me. The TV told me that knives are bad. Mm -hmm, I bet it did, right? So it's really looking at the deeper understanding of plant medicine, you know, and how old everything is. You know, I use horsetail, which is part of the stuff to bring down silica in the greenhouse. We have an elliptical greenhouse to concentrate electromagnetism, you know, mm. so we're using all the Steiner stuff. So silica is an ancient element for flexibility. It's the crystalline structure of the plant and the outline of the leaves. So we take horsetail. That's 300 million years old. I mean, what? I mean, it's like dinosaur stuff here. And we say, you know, psilocybin is 125 million years old. It's like, oh no, you can't touch that. Those are illegal, right? Well, why are they illegal, right? So there's so many plants that we can use, you know, another great series is the Ringing Cedar series by uh, Vladimir Megra um, out of Russia. It's the uh, Anastasia series, which is beautiful. And he talks about, you know, Anastasia talks about that everything that you require is simply outside your home, right? It's that electromagnetic mirror. If you have liver issues, you'll have dandelion root everywhere. You know, I can drive by the beach and there's a big bar here and there's an herb called bitter melon, right? Which is everywhere. I've never seen so much of it. It's running up into the bar because everyone's drinking all the time and it's to detox the liver. It's the main liver detox herb. And it's just easy to see a little bit. It's everywhere. So it's really just stepping outside mm -hmm. and saying, what plant is calling to me, right? And say, wow, that's just, ah, oh, something's magic about it. It's not calling to your mind. It's calling to your heart. It's saying, hey, you need to take this, right? So then we find an herbalist that really knows what it is, right? 100% identification is number one, you know, in plants. Yeah. And then we start to get books. We start to learn. We start to identify, go to someone else. Like, oh, I think it's this. Yes, that is that. Oh my gosh, how do I take it? Is it an infusion? Is it a, is it cold maceration? Is it a decoction? You know, is it an alcohol tincture? Like, how do I now deal with plants? Because we've lost the two main forms of medicine, according to Hippocrates. Let food be thy medicine. We now say, let food be thy poison, right? And, and let medicine be thy food, right? So the herbs are supposed to be taken every day, whether it's in your salad, right? Whether it's in your smoothie, go outside. I can grab a hundred plants, you know, that are all medicinal that I planted that I just put in the smoothie. There's go to cola, there's shanka piedra, here's some of this. I have everything there because I wanted that paradise where my medicine chest was outside. And I go around and stroke their little leaves all day and they're super happy and they produce so much more. 
because love creates light, which oscillates mm -hmm. through cymatics, creating matter, right? Everything comes back to the creation, which is love, the logos, the Fibonacci spiral, right? Which gave birth to light. Light created seven, seven, second, uh, seven frequencies that began to oscillate and change to create first density and microorganisms and water. And on and on and on it goes. So getting in touch with the plants is, is so important right now because mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't know where our medicine is. The average person is like, where's your medicine? Like, the medicine cabinet? I'm like, no, 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 that's yeah. all poison. Like, that's great for acute poisoning, but if you take that long term, you're going to destroy your body. We are made of nature. If we divorce ourselves from nature, we become whatever chemical we're putting in the body. We're not made of synthetic chemicals, right? So the earth is saying, look, I have everything growing in abundant right here for you. Just simply seek it out. And if we don't, that's fine. We'll walk over all the plants that would cure our cancer on the way to our chemo appointment. That's a choice. Yeah. Through that suffering, we say, man, I think there's another way. Next time we come in, we say, there's got to be another way. This is bullshit. I remember that. There's no way I'm doing that this time. I'm going to do this, right? Because the easy way out has a big karmic consequence, right? And this is what the 3D world has been. It's like, oh, just get your plastic. Eh, it's easy. But yeah. the average person is absorbing five grams of microplastics per week. Five grams. Now throw, throw your bank card into your smoothie every Monday morning. There's your five grams. Now do that every single week. You've now eaten 52 bank cards by the end of the year. Every man, woman, child, and baby. Because when we throw out the plastic and we don't care, the earth says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to break this down into microplastics. I'm going to suck it up in the air and I'm going to drop it down into your organic garden and your rainwater that you think is so pure. Because you didn't care about plastics. You didn't care about the earth or the seaweed or any other creature out there other than your convenience, right? So we have to say, well, what are we doing now that's gonna impact us in 50 to 100 years? It's all Native American culture. You know, we're giving our, we're borrowing the earth from our great grandchildren. We're not just able to use it as a fun park. We're not able to destroy water and food and everything else. For what, right? The 3D world is breaking down. We're not just doing it to have more things because those things don't have any value anymore. What's real is family, heart, love, and balance. So people are being called back to the systems in which have originally blend in place, which is the plant systems, the medicine, raw food, detox, you know, coconuts, all these things that are like, ooh, I want that. Laying in the sun naked balances all hormones. I mean, there's a million things. It's just nature. Yeah. No, cover everything up. Oh, okay. And get some carcinogens on your body that blocks UVB. Therefore, you don't have any vitamin D synthesis at all, which is needed for 80% of the functions of the body. So we say, okay, that's fun. That's great. You know, I'm not in a fear of dying from the sun. I lay in the sun all the time and, you know, lay out naked all the time. It's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But setting up those places and systems where you have that, right? And not accepting the 3D fear control and separation, working through thought an imaging and feeling of how can we now create a new world that has the systems that are in place where everybody wins. And first, how do we win, right? And then how does family win? And how does neighbors win? Once we get so full and abundant, where we just maximize service to self, we have service to other self, right? And then we teach people, we share seeds. This is how it's always been. Right. Always yeah. done before all the big companies and their fear control and money and paper and all the stuff. We're just like, eh, it's not so fun anymore. It gets boring. You know, when it gets boring, you started to master things, you know, when it's like, eh, alcohol's boring, eh, you know, that's boring. Okay, cool. Now you're ready for something new. So whatever in your life you're very bored with, it's looking at being like, eh, I've mastered this. I've mastered that. Maybe as a person that always wants to take you out and drink alcohol. It's like, eh, I'm kind of bored with that. I want something else that's more in line with nature. Let me take a yoga class. Let me do Pilates. Let me do something that can biophotonically enhance my energetic potential that I'm so charged that my cup is so filled that I just have to pour all of my love onto others um, as it's just in nature of my being or we choose the other, right? And all of it is a free will choice of the lessons in which we're learning to maintain that level of wholeness, right? Mm. Yeah. Wow. I think you've just dropped a lot of wisdom for folks to think about, to contemplate, to accept mm -hmm. and transcend mm -hmm. with so much goodness in there. Um, you know, there, I think I just want to ask, cause I want to be mindful of your time. I want to ask you to really just drop in. If you could take, like you just said a lot, 
you know, so, and every yeah. bit of it is so super important. So what is, if someone's going to leave this and remember one thing, <laughs> one thing and take it forward, that is the most important thing today, right now, what, what would it be? And, and how can people find out more if they want to go deeper with you? Yeah, it's always, it's always finding your bliss. I mean, Joseph Campbell said it and, and you know, it, that's just it. It's really finding your bliss, but not settling, right? What we accept yeah. today, we have to accept tomorrow, right? And acceptance should be the frequency of freedom. If it's not, it's a frequency of slavery kind of thing. So it's really looking at mm -hmm. what are we accepting now that we don't want to accept tomorrow? And what can we do to create a new reality, right? Because there's always a choice. There's always an option. There's always a way out of whatever is happening. If we mm -hmm. seek enough, the universe will bring people, situations through synchronicity. You can talk hours on fun stories of that, but it's really mm -hmm. looking at what's coming into your field and why, right? Do we reject it? And someone says, hey, I got a free ticket over here to Costa Rica. I can't, I get work all the time. I get this. Oh, okay. We close the door. Right. So it's really looking at what's coming into your field and, and what do you want more of? Because we're the ultimate creator in everything. One, 100 millionth of a second, our thoughts are being reflected back at us, trying to teach us that we're the ultimate creator. So what are we creating now, tomorrow, and in five years for ourselves, for our neighbors, for our friends, and for humanity, because the power we have is only utilized if it's activated from the heart, right? You know what? You know what this brings up? One thing I've been thinking about, it's kind of a thread as you're speaking. One of the easiest, you know, this isn't always easy. It's always beautiful, but it's not always easy to, to drop in and do that level of contemplation and, and shifting of your thoughts, right? Because it's not just changing your thoughts. There's like a lot of programs and patterns we want to dismantle in order to be able to have that be our norm. But one of the easiest things I think that is uh, to me a virus is one word. If people would stop saying, I'm sorry, right? The word, sorry, 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 sorry. Everyone's always apologizing for how you feel. You're experiencing something that looks to them or they're perceiving as bad or the world. And, and I'm sorry. It's this, this kind of colluding with the story of something that they, their own perception of what you're experiencing or their own perception of war, or their own perception of, of pandemics or whatever. Right. So if we could, if we could just I would love to hear, what do you think about that? If we could just eliminate the, I'm sorry. And, and instead, when we want to see, when we want to share empathy, seek other words, you know, seek other ways to express empathy without using sorry. That's a really powerful exercise. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's just taking that deeper responsibility. You know, one of the, the three most powerful words that we can say to shift anything is I am responsible. Right. That's it. It's like, well, I did this because or da, 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 da. so it's 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 taking that personal responsibility is the number yeah. one. Otherwise, we continue to blame the car, the person, the drunk driver, all of it. What do we learn from that? Right. So, yeah, the sorry is that, ah, oh, you know, always saying, OK, I don't know what to do with that. Right. So it's really happening. You know, the beautiful lens we have is compassion for people. And how can we assist them in that? as opposed to just that separation of, well, this is yours, this is yours. I don't have any more time or anything to deal with this because I'm so full of all my shit that I've never dealt with, right? So it is getting to that lens of compassion and giving from the heart. If everyone did that, you know, just like a little kid, if he gives you a little rock he picks up, you're like, oh, oh my gosh, you look around, I got to give him something, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you receive something, you always want to give. The problem is no one wants to give anymore. You know, in the 3D world, the 4D says, no, give, 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 give. You know, we can give that compassion, that love and all of that. And what happens is it gets returned because dopamine isn't just receiving, it's giving as well. We're hardwired to receive the reward system when we give someone something, you know, through that lens of gratitude and love. And when we start to do that, it's a ripple effect, right? Because it feels so good. Kids taught us that. And we said, no, 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 hold all those rocks. You might need all those rocks one day. It's like, oh, you're right. I really, all of them. Yes. Don't give them to your friends. That's your car. Your, 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 it's all bullshit, right? It is, yeah. but we're trying to figure a way that's it's balanced because if you give everything away, you have nothing as well. So it's the balance of everything, right? And we learning through giving everything, giving nothing, what feels good. If we go back to that internal feeling state, we win and everyone else wins. If someone isn't being paid enough and we're like, oh, I can pay you more. Now they're happy. Their kids are happy. Like, great. Don't hoard it all for yourself because you're losing, right? The universe always yeah. asks them what they choose when they think it's all real. And that's mm. the heart of all of it, 
right? Oh, I'm going to have to lose this. It's like, no, you come back again. You're going to learn that lesson. Now you're going to be him because you didn't understand him through the lens of compassion. How could he be this? All of that separation mm. makes us become that person, right? The holograph movie will play. So we're now that character. We're now that actor as well. So it's a bit of fun and games everywhere. So holding on to that part and that compassion for humanity to me is the biggest thing we can do right now. And how can I assist you is what we ask our other selves, which is our friends, our family, you know, our mm. partners, all of it. And that's it. It's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. it's like, oh, what? don't talk to me like that. It's not about you. It's about them. What they're experiencing is about them. How could you assist that transition to true love and heart felt, you know, understanding? We don't want to understand them because we've never understood ourselves. We've never mastered that. Right. And that's the big mm. thing of everything is anything that we're looking for external we have to learn it internally and we have to earn it, right? We take the big L love through the learning and we earned it. We earned the partner, we earned the whatever it is. We've earned everything because we've understood through deep learning the value of that, whether it's giving or compassion or being nurturing or loving or yeah. seed sharing or whatever it is. It has to be learned in order to be earned. If you want it, you learn it first. You can't just mm -hmm. get it. It was like, there's no point. You can't just give a, a diploma to a two-year-old. Oh, you know, you're a PhD little man. It's like, what? He rips yeah. it up or he, you know, there's no, there's no value to it. The value is in the experiential learning. And the more we seek the learning, the more we get the learning. The more we have that learning, the more we have an obligation to share the learning in which we've, we've accumulated. This is the teach, mm -hmm. learn, and learn, teach philosophy, right? It's an obligation. You feel, I want to share this. Why? Yeah. Because it's made such an impact in your life. But if people aren't learning because they're not following their heart and seeking, there's nothing to share. We're sharing misery and all of these things, which is a misalignment of the heart's energy because mm -hmm. we haven't contemplated future, you know, previous experiences. So all of it comes down to this deeper contemplation and creation of what do we want, right? As opposed to, oh, I, I've only gotten this, 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 this. We have indebtedness versus gratitude, right? All of these are the duality of the polarity of the universe will fall on any pole once we've learned it, we're able to earn it and then we're able to teach it, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm going to distill uh, a few of my takeaways from, from that in, in like, how can I help you, right? What can I do for you? And also mm. the, you know, how can I win? How can everyone win? So those are really, really beautiful, simple takeaways that people can like, once they're finished downloading all of this and integrating all of the wisdom and gnosis that you have just conveyed mm -hmm. um, that the, you know, a good place to just even start off is, is that how can I win? How can we all win? Because that will, that alone will change our reality. So thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll share all your links where people can find you in the show notes and learn Beautiful. about what you're working on. And folks, I really, really highly recommend you check out Dr. Greg's work. It is by far one of the more needed, one of the more needed um, contributions on this planet right now. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Catalyst Talks. Stay tuned for what's up next and please subscribe to our podcast and rate us wherever you listen. You'll find these all at catalysttalks.com. Join the conversation on social media. And if you'd like to reach out, please send me, Stephanie, a private message through stephanietraker.com. Your attention means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you.